All right, guys, let's kick off. So again, two major ways we run office hours. One, we are sharing our screen. So it's easy to follow along there, but you are all welcome to collaborate in the space. You don't even need Edvo accounts to collaborate in these spaces. Uh, but if you have one, that is lovely. Okay, so few things um, we're going to cover today. Um, I want to always ground us in why we're all here. Uh, and I'm always curious to understand from our familiar faces <laughs> and our new faces, uh, why you're choosing to spend this hour with us. We have busy lives. There are a million things we could be doing. So the fact that all of you are here is so special. And feel free to drop a sticky on the board or in the chat, whatever you prefer, um, why you're here, what you're hoping to get out of today. And if there's any questions that you wanna make sure that we answer for you before we hop off. So I love this massive stickies are being created and smaller stickies are being created. It's great. Um, all right, so I'm gonna ground us in the Edvo team's why, and then I'm gonna hand it off to Darlene to share some product updates to also showcase some features. Um, some of you have been asking us, hey, what does this thing do? And we're gonna show you what it does and have any discussion we need to have around it. And then there'll be plenty of time as always for Q and A. Um, so feel free to jump in whenever. Uh, there's two ways also you can jump in. You can literally interrupt us and say, hey, hey, stop, I have a question, we don't mind. Uh, but if you wanna be doing it in any other way, you can do the raise hand on Zoom um, as well to get our attention. All right, let's get started. So why are we all here? Um, our mission at Edvo is to help people think well. I was just having this amazing conversation with Justin, who is a new uh, face um, in, in our community. And I was telling him, you know, helping people think well for me didn't actually come from any innate curiosity around how people think. Like I didn't actually care about how people think until recently. The reason why I wanted to help people think well is because I think the most empowering thing um, people have is their ability to make sense of the world, is their ability to think independently, is their ability to uh, just be self-agent. And for those of you who don't know, my background comes from education technology. So I spent the first like eight years of my career working in education, working in the classrooms, building software for the Department of Education, for superintendents. And the one thing that I always got really peeved with is we've created an education system built on teaching people what to think and not actually empowering them on how to think, how to make sense of the world. And the reality is the world changes so fast that if I even told you, hey, this is what you should believe in now, it could be totally irrelevant tomorrow, right? It could be totally outdated tomorrow. So my desire to help people think well really stems from my desire to help people be more self-agent, um, to help people be more self-sufficient. If people can think well, ideally they can live well. Um, if their definition of success is financial freedom, then hopefully by helping them think well, they can make sense of the financial system better. They can understand for their unique context, how they can become more financially free, how they can hit their own goals. And so just wanted to share that tidbit of conversation I was just having with Justin and kudos Justin and shout out to Justin for making that space for us to have that conversation. Um, and then really quickly, two main goals that we have here at Edvo to help us in this mission. Number one, we want to create digital spaces that bring out the best in us. Most of our thinking as knowledge workers here, all of us, we spend hours every day in our digital environment. Um, and I want to make sure that just like we curate our physical environments to make us feel a certain way, to bring out our creativity, to bring out our Zen, to bring out our best self, how can we bring that into our digital spaces? And I think we all know tab hell, windows everywhere, the misery of feeling like you're in a war zone in the morning, first thing, that's not it. So that's goal number one, introducing better digital spaces. And then goal number two, and these are you know, very, very interconnected, is how do we help people unlock the power of data? Data is the most valuable resource in the world. Why? Because it lets you see patterns that you otherwise couldn't. It lets you connect more dots. It lets you see the bigger picture. Or in other words, it lets you think better. It helps you think well. And so how can we bring this powerful database technology that's helping 
companies everywhere solve problems better, create more products, get financial freedom? How can we bring that to the individual? So those are our two main goals. That's our mission. Thank you guys for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Handing it over to Darlene to get into the product updates. Um, and then again, if you guys have anything to say, please pause us and we can make this a full discussion. Cool, sweet. I think I'm unmuted. Great. Um, awesome. So as we kind of like go through any of these um, product updates or just how to's, feel free to just slam whatever thoughts you have onto the space. I know like Shereen, Rashid, and Danielle, part of the Evo team, they'll probably be exploring the space and can answer questions directly there. Um, but if there's anything that feels like a bigger question, um, then we can just talk about it as a crew. All righty. Um, and then if anyone can share the space, Shereen, if you can share the space one more time, I think Steve just hopped in. Yes, 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 there you go. Glad to have you here with us, Steve. Okay, cool. So a few updates from last week. Um, I just kind of want to give kudos to, I'm going to pat myself on the back and every other Evo team member on the back because we have been making iterative prod pushes every week for the last month. Um, and so for us, especially as we are, you know, improving quality and stability, that's huge. Um, and hopefully you'll be making, you'll see a difference as you guys use Edvo a little bit more regularly too. Uh, so since last week, we fixed an issue where the timeline would sometimes load and navigate to the most like recent topic instead of staying on the timeline. Um, we fixed some auto playing YouTube issues. So if you were bringing in YouTube videos, they would just auto play. Um, it caused quite a bit of chaos if you were bringing all like five YouTube videos into one space. So that is now fixed. It won't autoplay anymore. Um, but I think the biggest thing that we did last week uh, is now that we're we're logging errors. So essentially, whenever Edvo crashes for you, you will probably see a red flag in the upper right corner of your space. If that happens, um, I mean, one, that means something crashed, but two, that means like, hey, we're logging it, we know what's up and we can actually like see and figure out what's going on. Um, so we're super excited about that, but if that keeps happening, let us know and we'll have better documentation to actually figure out what's going on. Cool. What's coming up? Um, for some of y'all who have been with us for, for a little time, you have interacted and seen what portals can do in Edvo space. Um, for those of us who have just created Edvo accounts, portals have been broken <laughs> since then, but they are now being fixed. We are in progress of getting those fixed. Portals essentially allow you to nest spaces within spaces. Um, so I can't show you right now in our current production, but essentially you'll be able to like interact with multiple spaces in one screen. That's what portals allows you to do. I'll send a demo or if anyone wants to like Mm, Shree, maybe if you want to like record a demo and just throw it into the space so people can see what that looks like. Um, we also are fixing some of the stickiness issues where if you hit a meta key and you hit delete, it would delete your card versus like the items in your actual web page. So those things are being fixed. Um, and a two pretty fun features coming up are auto positioning um, in your space and being able to notify users with email invites when you invite a specific user to your space. So if you don't know what that looks like, you can just type in an email into the share up here. We lost you, Dar. Oh, am I still here? You're here. Okay, cool. You can just type up into the share, add an email, click send. Ah. Example of an error flag. So if this happens to you, send it to us. But this yeah. is what we pushed last week. Okay. Anyways, this should reload the space once that happens so that your Edvo becomes uncrashed. There we go. But essentially, when you are able to share your space directly with an email, the person you shared it with would get an email notification um, for them to create an account. So that is also coming soon. Cool. Any questions on those before we kind of move into this new segment? Question for me, Darlene. Um, I just yes. added it there on a sticky. Is it possible to move individual items from one space to another space? 
Yes. So there are multiple ways you can do that. Um, one, you can do that with the portal because the portal, that's why we named it the portal. It gives you a glimpse into that space and you can move things, just dragging and dropping them in there essentially. Um, another way you can move items with, between spaces, which is a fantastic segue into what we're talking about next is through tags. So I'll get to that in one second. Um, any other portal related questions we want to cover right now? I'll also, um, portals aren't yet in prod for you guys. Um, right, Dar? Portals aren't in prod no. yet. Yeah, so I will uh, record a demo in just a bit and show it to you guys, but it's it's truly, it was like, it was my personal unlock um, of working with information very differently. So I know that means nothing to you guys. So I will record a demo and show it to you guys in just a bit. Cool. Um, just a quick note, I believe we can also use the organizer for that as well. There's uh, there's portals, tagging, using the organizer, dragging to the dock and back out. Uh, those are the ways that I can think of to move things between spaces. So lots yeah. of ways. Yes, um, there are a lot of different ways you can do different things in Edbo. So every office hour, we're now going to have this segment called What Does This Do? Um, and we will go over the different features in Edvo um, because we don't quite have documentation up yet, but we're kind of just creating that together right now. Um, so in today's segment of what does this do, we'll cover tags, um, what you can do with note cards, what you can do with the different items in your space, uh, some of the extension stuff, and then what the, what the heck are these colorful blobbies. Um, and so in this segment, we'll talk pause. about the capacities and the limitations of each of those things. Yeah, and quick pause, guys. So, you know, we've made a list really of the features, right, to make those more clear for you. But to like workflows, if you guys have a question, like how do I just move things between spaces? Like really from your desire, from the job you're trying to do, throw those in these stickies so we make sure we cover those as well. That's actually the most important part for you guys. Yeah, so just add them here and here or here or anywhere in the space, and then we can kind of go through them as we go. Cool. Um, so going back to Gabrielle's question of how do you move things between spaces? Uh, so one that you can't do yet, we talked about is the portal. The other is tagging. Um, so when you tag something, let me show you. I'm going to zoom in here. So this is a note card. You'll notice when you hover over the title, you'll be able to like add a tag. Um, and you can tag this to any other item item or Edvo database. So if you wanted to move this to, let's say, this like Edvo office hours space, I'll just type in and search Edvo office hours, click there, add the tag. The cool thing with tags is that it's really just like a representation of like the connection that you're making within your Edvo. So now that I've tagged it here, I can just click on Edvo office hours. Ooh, this is the bug we were talking about earlier. Let me refresh. So usually when you click, you should just be able to hop directly into that space. And now right. something something happened here. I just tried to duplicate a node and I tried to edit the second node. And the first node was being edited at the same time. So what? <laughs> I think okay. that was someone, someone's autoplay playing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, was that was that on a question? Yeah, there was a actually an issue uh, i don't know how to how to fix that because i tried to hit ctrl plus z to undo what I, i've done and mm -hmm. it didn't work yeah yeah that makes sense um because we haven't programmed undo yet for all of the actions you can do in your space mm, okay. yet um so if you accidentally remove something you can control on z to um, undo that but can you walk me through what you were experiencing yeah, there was a note here. Uh, I don't know if you're seeing my my cursor. Let me go back. Yeah, I'm trying to add this note here. What are uh, I just drag and drop holding Alt the Alt key Alt, Alt key to duplicate the note, and I tried to add the second note that I created, and the first note was being was being added as well with the same content. Ah, okay, cool, cool. Um, is it this note that we're talking about? Yeah, th this yellow one up there. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. So you kind of just discovered what we call transclusion. Has anyone like, is anyone familiar with transclusion? Okay. 
Um, so it's essentially like a live copy. So if you were mm -hmm. to hold alt and like drag this sticky, you're gonna create a, what we call like a live copy. It's like the same node in your graph essentially. So if you were to edit this, mm. it edits that there. Um, so in one space, you can kind of see how that works, how editing one edit, edits the other. But imagine if you had these in different spaces. Imagine if you were like, hey, I want to reuse this piece of data everywhere or anywhere. And if I edit one, it's going to update it everywhere else. So anytime you're working with this, that, this data, you're always going to have the most updated form of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, we don't have a way for a quick duplicate yet. So um, mm. if it sounds like that's what you were trying to do. If you wanted to do that, you kind of have to just like copy it, create a new sticky and, and paste it for now. Yeah, there's a couple of things we're going to have to work on based on your guys' feedback. If I transcluded something and I want to untransclude it, like I want to unlink those, but I don't want to lose the contents of it. How do I do that? Um, I'll definitely, if I just want to copy paste, um, how do I do that? So though, like, again, based on your needs and the priorities of those needs, we're going to obviously add those things in as well and find the best user flow for that. Is there any... Is there any visual way to say that this live copy is in fact a live copy? So with stickies, not yet. Um, with cards, you will see them as tags. So this is actually, oh, actually, this is a good example. So this, what, what's this do card? If I were to go into this Edvo office space, again, this is a bug. So let's refresh. Oh. Um, Okay. If I were to go into this Edvo office space and I see what's this do, this is a live copy of that card. It's the same exact card, just in different spaces. And you can use the tags to know where else is this in my Edvo database. Does that make sense? So the, tags, the tags are kind of the primary visual metaphor that we have right now to indicate that, uh, that a topic is linked in multiple places. Um, by the way, um, one thing to note here is that you're in the Edvo office hours space currently, Dar, and um, and the only tag you can see is the 2023 August 8 Edvo. Um, we're not. You could you could essentially think of this card as having two tags, um, one of which we're hiding because it's redundant to the space that you're currently in. Um, we're definitely looking for ways to improve that visual metaphor to signify that this thing is in multiple places. Um, there's a number of different little ways that we can signify that. So uh, that's something um, uh, beyond just tags, which I think are the primary mechanism. That's something that we're working on from a design perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I think, Jason, to your point, I definitely think whether it's notes, stickies, it would be helpful to have more clarity on these are live copies versus not. Um, and we're just gonna search for what's gonna make that most clear visually. Mm -hmm. But I think a, a really key thing to understand here, and we're, we're searching for the right time to communicate this and the right way to communicate this is that these are not documents. This is not a containment relationship. This is, this is fundamentally a graph that we're building and a graph is not about containment, it's about relation. So you can relate anything to any other thing. So that sounds nice abstractly, and it's actually very important conceptually for Edvo doing the thing, the kinds of things that we wanted to do, but it's not very accessible from an everyday point of view. Um, people like thinking about things in terms of containment, but this is explicitly not about containment, it's about relationship. Uh, for those of you new to graphs as a topic in general, I am going to in our office hours section um, or space, sorry. I'm going to bring in the YouTube recording uh, that we did where Daniel, Darlene, me and Alex, um, our design partner, we actually talked about graph theory like 101 pretty much. So if you guys are curious, um, you can watch that recording and ask us any questions slash join in on the discussion. Cool. 
Um, so a few other things with how we use tags to visualize those relationships. Um, so example, again, we're in this office hour space. This was a tag and we clicked on it to jump into this space. Um, this was the original card we were looking at that was tagged to office hours. What's this do? This is actually the card representation of the office hour space that we were in. So you can see what does this do is tagged to 2023 August 8th Edvo office hours. This says 2023 August 8th Edvo office hours. If you look at the tags below of this card, you'll notice that like you'll see all these other tags. These are essentially representations of what is inside this space. And because we know what's this do is inside that 2023 August 8th office hour space, it's tagged by so, and it has this office hours card has this member tag here to represent what's inside of it. So, so just different ways you can visualize relationships through these tags. Yeah, and I just wanna bring it to the use case of how do you add things to multiple spaces or other spaces. So with tags specifically, again, there's multiple ways, but with tags, let's say I'm in a space already and I just wanna make sure that this thing, whether it's a web page, whether it's a PDF, whether it's a note card, right? I just wanna make sure that that thing stays in my current space, but is also available to me in another space. So what I would do is, um, Dar, maybe you can show this with the YouTube example, it's right under Q&A. So there's that YouTube iframe or the, the video that I brought in on the graph theory. So if Dar wants this, like she sees this in the shared space, but she wants this in another space, like her graph theory space, she can just search if she already has that space, it showed up in that drop down. And now in her graph theory space, this video is there. So that's one way to add things in another space. If you want to, yeah, so that I'll, I'll pause there. Um, does that make sense on how to use tags to add certain stuff in other spaces? Yeah, and the cool part is you can add things to as many spaces as you want. So like, as you can see, I can just keep adding tags and it's gonna yeah. appear, this YouTube video is now gonna appear in all of these spaces. Yeah, and you can and you can create new topics. The, you know, the whole idea is we're trying to categorize, we're trying to organize, uh, if you have an existing topic that matches the thought that you're having, that you're trying to associate this with, then use it. If you don't have an existing topic, then create it. And we're trying to make that process as, as sort of low friction as possible so that you can organize the current space, but also organize each of these things conceptually. Yeah. Um, um, this is a relevant question. How do you find things added in this way with tags? Um, could we expand on this perhaps? I'm trying to, I wanna make sure I understand the full question. Oh, I, I added it. So um, like, how does it choose where to put that video in the other space that you just tagged it in some origin or I don't know where it would go. Maybe that's auto positioning or. Mm -hmm. yeah. Daniel, wanna answer this? Yeah, so we have some, we have some kind of rudimentary auto positioning logic that we're currently using um, we have some fancier auto positioning logic that is a work in progress. And um, long story short is it's trying to put related things together on those spaces based on every piece of information that it has available. Um, so happy to talk about the mechanisms behind that uh, whenever the time is right. Yeah. But yes. Oh, oh, one other one other little note is that after it auto positions, uh, if you don't like where it is, you you can just drag it and move it and it'll stay where you put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I figure once we have um, at least this next iteration of auto positioning out, we can probably have some like specific sessions on just auto positioning <laughs> and how we built that. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right, this is a quick question. So I'm gonna ask, answer this, multi-select items in a space to drag them as a group. Um, so if you wanted to multi-select something, you can hold down your shift and then just like click and drag and you'll see this lasso essentially. Um, once you release, these are all selected. You can't really 
tell, we can probably update that a bit, but those are all selected and you can just drag them as a group. Sorry if I'm messing anyone up right here. <laughs> yeah, another way is to hold down shift and instead of doing like a lasso, you can just click, click, click. And those should all be again selected even though you can't see it. All right. So I see some of us creating um, sticky notes. I see some of us creating note cards. Um, so I'm going to show you the different things that you can like add to your space and in, in, in order to just like annotate your workspace in a way. Has everyone kind of discovered this radial nav down here? This toolbar? Okay. Um, so this is our like toolbar. It's in this fun radial nav. Um, we're inspired by just how you navigate a game, essentially. I want to have a quick, like probably not even a conversation. I just want to plant this seed and I bet this will lead to a larger discussion. When we first created Edvo um, or, or the interface part of it, uh, we had a toolbar very similar to let's say Miro, right? It's like on the left, it's a rectangle, it's vertical. And what I wanted us to be intentional about is really seeing our information spaces as multi-dimensional, right? Things start connected. You go deep into something, you do a deep dive, you come back out, you do a bird's eye view. It is not this like 2D whiteboard where it's static and things are only on this screen and they don't actually connect anywhere else in your knowledge base, right? Or in your brain. Um, and so instead of keeping with the whiteboard type metaphor, we wanted to start in introducing, and there's many more elements we got to introduce down the road, but we wanted to start introducing the concept of let's navigate our information, let's explore our information, let's see it as this multidimensional interconnected thing. And so a lot of what you guys will hopefully be a part of long term is helping us morph this interface to bring more of those feelings um, and that type of interaction with your information. Um, and that's where the radial bar comes in. It's pulling from game design um, and how you navigate just like video games and, and different role playing games. Um, we're just starting to introduce that elementalism <laughs> um, through through that choice. And I don't know if this is if this is a rabbit hole and 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 shush me if so, but um, but uh, you know one of the reasons why we removed the grid lines from the background is because we really wanted to try to avoid uh, a couple of things. We wanted to avoid the perception that everything is going to be a flat panel of glass forever. Yeah. Uh, because we want to do some some sneaky things with um with sizing and positioning so that you can have like non-linear zoom you know putting things between other things where the sizes don't match and making it all flow really smoothly um and you know we we also want to differentiate from canvas based apps because we do not consider ourselves a canvas based app it, while we we may use the infinite canvas metaphor to some degree um that is that is the starting point not the ending point yeah um Dar, I know I'm sidetracking you a little bit, um, but I think this just, it'll wrap it up nicely. Um, can you come down to this GIF right under the YouTube? Yeah. So this is guys a quick, and it's a GIF, so it'll loop. Um, it's a quick old demo of how portals work. Um, so at the very beginning, maybe it's not the best example and I'll, I'll, I'll do a better one, uh, but this one was really quick. Hold on, let it restart. <laughs> so that's a portal, uh, which is really just essentially it's a nested space view. So there's this large space. Now I'm going into this other space, which which essentially is like if I want to not leave that parent space, I want to maintain that context, but I want to go and explore what's happening in a sub context or my sub graph whatever that is, right? I wanna go deep portal into another subtopic. I can do that without having to click and go into that space. And so again, the multi-dimensionality of, you know, everything's interconnected. You can go explore different contexts without having to break the relationship with your current headspace. That's, that's what we're talking about here with the radial nav, the exploration, the portals, things like that. 
anyways, a lot more we can talk about and better examples, um, and we'll get into it, but wanted to kind of plant that seed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. So that's portals. <laughs> we'll send another demo so you can kind of see it in action with like dragging and dropping things as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the radial nav, if you are using a um, external mouse or if you just have center click, um, if you do a center click, you'll be able to bring this navigation wherever you are in the space. And then you just hover. And once you release, it will create whichever item you chose. So this one's a note card. It's yellow for some reason. So you're able to choose the note card, the sticky. Um, Portals are broken right now. So if you try this, you'll see just something that's just blank. You won't be able to drag and drop, but it will be a portal once it's fixed. <laughs> and someone was asking about this search, I think. Yes, does search move things around the space to find things in its current space? Um, so there are two different things. This search, and we can probably label this better, is a way for you to bring in other items in your database directly into this space. So imagine if you're like working in this context, you're like, oh, I have this piece of information I need. Um, let me reference it really quick without leaving the context that I'm in. You can do this topic search essentially. So if I wanted to bring in, let's just keep using Evo office hours as an example, I would just search. Let's do that again. Here it is. Okay. And then I'm able to just, whoa. What happened? Did y'all experience that with me or am I, did I just get portaled somewhere? <laughs> okay. Just you, but I think that's, yeah. Cause I think you there actually you clicked on one of the tabs that was linked to. Oh, I probably did. Yeah, so I'm able to just bring that in. So that's what this is. Um, we don't have in space search yet, which I think is what this is referring to. Um, but if this is something that you know you're desiring that's blocking you, uh, let us know because these are all things that we're kind of prioritizing in the pipeline right now, or figuring out how to prioritize in the pipeline right now. So once I'm able to bring this in, reference it, I can just remove it and get on with my workflow. So something that I do want to note, because I know there was confusion here as well, is that if you have an item in your space, um, what's a better example, like this one, um, um, if you right click on it or pull up the menu and click remove from space, this is going to do literally what it says. It's just gonna remove it from this space. It won't delete it, it won't archive it. It still exists in your Edvo database but it's just removed from this space. And what that means is that if it's tagged anywhere else, like it's tagged in graph theory, once I remove this, it's still gonna exist everywhere else that it's connected to. I just undid and it can Yeah, she commands Z. So right now command Z only works with that operation <laughs> where if you delete, um, uh, I think it's any object, right, Dar? Like, or I shouldn't say object. Is it? It applies. Any, a, yeah. any card in your space. Um, same thing with like note cards. Yeah, if I like remove this and undo, we'll come back. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I do want to note though is if you like backspace all of these individually and remove this, and you hit undo, it's not going to redo all of that text yet. Yes. Yeah, because it's yeah. each is like its own action. So it's just the last action. Yes. Yep, yep. Have you, have you, have you removed that shortcut to delete the, the element? Like the when I press control plus backspace, that deletes the, the entire element. Because I'm always trying to delete entire words when I'm writing a, an article, for example. Yeah, Jason, I remember you reported that. Um, we have a case <laughs> for that. It's in our next prod push. So hopefully we'll either make it by end of this week or early next week. Um, but mm. that's something that is at the top of the pipeline right now. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah. We got you, Jason. Thank you for reporting. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, can I follow someone's pointer slash screen? Not yet. Um, we are kind of just now building out what the, our roadmap would look like um, if we're focusing more on those collaboration multiplayer features. And so as we are even like working all on in this space collaboratively together, um, please let us know like what hurts and what doesn't um because these are things that we can all add to our roadmap um same with i think authorship or mentions on specific outlines i think the other like literally today or yesterday robert like screenshotted the outline that we were collaborating on from last week and like added discord message it to me because i wouldn't have known that he was adding it to those things so all different multiplayer features that um we can start planning for Steve, how do I click on? Okay, well, yeah, Steve, go for it. I see your hand up. I don't really know what to do on the Zoom side, but. All right. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to ask, is there any way to momentarily Zoom things in rather than having to sort of manually Zoom in and manually just kind of right click to give myself like a three times momentary Zoom so I can kind of look over a big document and having to zoom in and then scroll and kind of get lost and disoriented when i'm too zoomed in too long so that's what i'm calling a magnifying glass you could magnify just a local area um but ideally the magnified area would be you know a, a changeable window as well do you have anything like that planned or functioning Ooh. Like a magnifying glass on certain windows, Daniel. I saw your like. I oh, saw no, you, words, whenever you, you, whenever you mouse well. over something with the right mu mouse button down, it will magnify like a little area of it, as if you were holding a magnifying glass over. You it. want a demo tile mode? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the closest thing we have to that right now, for example, it sounds like you wanted to be able to like see a dock um, more clearly while still having like. You know, Correct. while you're still like, I want to read. What does that say right there and only momentarily read something without losing my whole orientation? Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have that specific feature yet. Um, but we should note that. Uh, what we do have right now, if you didn't want to like zoom in and out of things, uh, you can use what we call tile mode. So if you just select whatever thing, like let's say this PDF, um, you click on this second button and it will just expand. Um, so you're able to just like get into it. Um, you would still kind of, when you are in tile mode, you're not seeing the rest of your space, like you mentioned, yep. but that is one way you're able to at least like get into it, um, and then escape to exit. And you can maybe try it with a couple of different cards just to show what it does. Uh, unfortunately, the screen share probably doesn't do it justice, but there's a bit of an animation, uh, oh. coming in. Oh, that kind of did it. Uh-huh. Yeah, so if you uh, yeah include a couple of things, and that's uh, Command U and Escape. So whatever you have selected when you hit Command U, it's going to try to it's going to try to expand those that either okay. one thing or multiple things to All fill right. the screen, and then you can hit Escape to bail out. Okay, but it doesn't actually go into the thing. So in other words, if I was looking at the YouTube video through this tile mode it wouldn't actually start playing the video, for example, correct? Um, it should. Uh, that's a good question. Does it? Yeah. If it's so, that's by yeah. accident, but um, but maybe it's a happy accident. No, I mean, what do you, no, if you tile mode into a YouTube video, it doesn't auto start playing, but then you hit play and it will play. Yeah. Yeah, I think, is, I mean, that, that's, is that what you were asking? Uh, all right, but it has the exact same functionality as it would have if you didn't go into tile mode. In other words, I could start playing a YouTube video right now while mm -hmm. it's in the space here, correct? It'll start yeah. play. Yep. So there's no additional functionality that's being added by entering tile mode or some access to the file that is otherwise precluded by being in the larger space. You're not like going into it in some way that you're not, it's mostly just how it's being visually represented that's mm -hmm. just not yeah. not any access okay yeah there's some fun implementation details behind that um because of how we have to composite that but yes um so that's it it is you can actually uh if you want to like mute it 
and maybe play the video, Dar. You might be able to demo that. That um, uh, I, I just have one quick question. We're kind of on this subject. So, uh, how broad are the file types that you're able to support, and do you have any type of security with regards to um, you know verification that files are authentic, integrated within one system, or you know a, an entire provenance structure? And uh, can you just, you know, once again, swap files securely end to end uh, without uh, problems and, and any type of file type? Can I just, you know, throw any type of data structure that I could have in Windows into this? I mean, what's, what's, what's going on? So we can handle any arbitrary kind of file, but it's only going to render a small number of them in the space. The yeah, yeah, I don't care about rendering, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so um, it'll just show them with a sort of generic icon if it doesn't know what kind of file it is. Um, we have we have plans. We have actually highly detailed plans that are pretty advanced in in order to implement full end to end encryption. That is not currently live, um, but it is very much in the works. Uh, and I want to point out that getting end to end encryption right with real time collaboration and sharing is is surprisingly hard. But um, but we've got a really good plan, and we're we're happy with it. Yeah, so things that you file types that you can render right now are web pages, PDFs, images, GIFs. Um, if you were to upload any other type of file, they will look like this. And you'd still be able to essentially organize them within your database um, and download them, um, but they aren't renderable yet. Cool. So I actually have. One of the Go things ahead. we're considering for the long term is like how to modularize that rendering so we can have community extensions. That's not immediately on our uh, on our short list, but it's something we're thinking about. Yeah. This is how I like use specific specific files, which are easier for me to find in Edvo and link everywhere else. Um, one thing I haven't showed y'all yet is a list view. So you know that you can either have like a portal, like let me show you this really quick, appearance. You can change your card type if you just go to appearance, that's what this is for. Um, and so based off of what you want to use it for, you can update the appearance. So if I wanted to like interact with the two different spaces, I'll use the portal to be able to like quickly drag and drop and visualize it that way. Um, normal is what you're seeing right now. Clean just removes the title and the tags. Uh, it's the appearance that our images have. So you notice when you bring an image in, there's no um, header. Let me just do this as an example. There's like no header or tags. That's what clean is. Um, and browser, if it's an iframe, you can show the URL bar with browser. And I believe this but, part is already in list mode, which is why it's not yes. showing list as an option, right? Yes, it's already in list mode. If you had a new card, you can change it to list mode. Um, but list essentially just shows a list view of everything that's within that space. So here I have a space called Edvo GIFs, and you can see this is just a list view of all of those GIFs. If I were to like jump into it, you'll actually be able to see those gifts, but I wanted to just visualize them as a list. Um, how this is really helpful is, for example, if I wanted to go back to our space here and I want to like be like, oh, there's a gift that fits this perfect moment. Let me go find it. Then I would just bring in Edvo gifts, bring that in. Something's going on with like these default sizings. Um, and then I would just drag this out, voila, and then I'll remove this. So that's how this view could be very helpful. It's just another way for you to interact with your different spaces. And you can also drag things directly into a list mode card. Is that worth demoing? Sure. Gifts, 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 gifts. Um, why don't you just transclude this in here there. So I just dragged this YouTube video, um, the drag proxy, this is a bug actually ended up in the top left corner instead of going this way. But you can see now that this graph theory session 
lives in here as well. So that's, again, another way of how do you move things between your spaces. Um, you, yeah, if you can, if you already have a space, you can bring that in and start seeing it as a portal, you can visualize it as a list view, drag things in and out of it, or transclude things. Again, if you don't want to just like that gift that Darlie brought into the space, if she wanted it to stay in her gift space and in this space, it would have been a transclusion like she showed you with the YouTube video. Again, transclusion is shift, alt, drag, dar. What's the, what's transclusion? Um, right? Alter option, hold down alt, your alt, like the alt key, and then just drag. Yeah, just drag. So it's just alt drag. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm just reviewing some of these. Um, what are these shapes being formed as we drop elements mm -hmm. on the screen? Cool. Um, we call these blobbies. <laughs> we can update the name. <laughs> Um, but Daniel, do you want to speak to these? <laughs> yeah, so so this is this is a sort of experiment that we're doing. Um, we call them in, in we casually call them blobbies, but they're implicit relationships. The idea is these are relationships that we're automatically forming with things that are nearby, and they may not be the most relevant, but um, but they do a couple of things for us, and exactly how well we're still finding out. Um, one of the things, is they uh, add cool vibes and uh, make it feel interesting. Um, the other thing is that it uh, gives us the opportunity to find serendipities later. It, you know, insofar as we might bias the search behavior based on this and other explicit relationships. So implementing search so that it's intelligent is uh, is tricky to do, and it requires that we have some sort of signals about what's the most relevant thing. So there are a variety of different cases where we hope to use these implicit relationships. Um, and uh, for those who are versed in graph theory, it is it is basically auto creating and, and, uh, and deleting edges based on the proximity of where you are. Um, so, so you could look at it as a sort of uh, data collection about what specifically might be related that you haven't gone out of your way. You know, you put two things close to each other, they might be related. Um, uh, and also uh, a, a fun visualization paradigm that continues to work outside of the canvas metaphor, potentially. So it's definitely an experiment. We'll see how it goes. Great. Yes, you guys are obviously using it. Um, report your thoughts, your feedback. If it's helping you, if it's hurting mm -hmm. you, like that radical candor is very, very important. <laughs> so send it to us, report it to us as you guys use it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm moving these as we go through them. So mm -hmm. I remember. Okay, how do I go to a page within a window without hitting Alt Left? All right, um, let me get a do we have an iframe in here that's not a uq here's one okay so if i was here and i'm like clicking around um how you can go back is just we we don't currently yet have like forward and back buttons on our uh web page bar yet um you should be able to just use your like windows forward and back buttons though oh uh, wait Maybe we broke that too. Yeah, we'll try that out and see if it works or not. And if it doesn't, then that's a bug. But usually if you wanted to go forward and back on like a web page that you're kind of like diving into um, until we have forward back buttons on our URL bar, um, these ones should work as expected. Okay. Is there a way, any way to create two instances of the same app, like Twitter, where I have two accounts? All right, so this sounds like you want to have um, Twitter with account number one and like another Twitter with account number two existing in your Edvo space or just within Edvo at the same time. Um, right now in the web app, that is not possible. Um, in our native app, which is something that we is still in progress, um, what we have 
what we call um, profiles. And you will be able to split those instances based off of the user profile that you choose for each, oh, snap, for each uh, web page or each object in your Edvo. But Dar, um, I don't know if it's just a Twitter thing, but like, for example, with Slack, I can bring my Slack server specifically for Edvo into my space and also have a Slack server for like another organization in the same space. Like I can still do that. I'm assuming, I don't know, again, with Twitter, if they let you like sign into multiple profiles at the same time, but if they can, then you should theoretically be able to do it. Um, if they're signed, like if for, for Slack, it's um, you're able to switch between accounts within that iframe. Yes, you can do that. Um, I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, the example here is like, if you wanted to see two separate iframes in one space with different accounts, um, if you were to like refresh your space, it would sign into the same one because we don't have um, different profile instances in the web app quite yet. I'm going to try it. And I'm going to report back because I don't like I use different instances. Yeah, I'll report back. I'm going to figure yeah. that out. Yeah, this, this, I, this. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that this stick note is mine. Uh, I was trying to log in to two different accounts in my Edvo space and the second area is the second window of Twitter keeps becoming the, my first account. So yeah, use, uh, because it shares the same accounts. cookies, um, with the mm -hmm. profiles, we will be able to like partition those cookies. Yeah. Um, so like, even though you can access different accounts within the same like window, um, as soon as you like refresh your space, it will log into like the latest cookies you have. Mm -hmm, got it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We we intend to support multiple browsing profiles um, whenever the uh, whenever the client app allows it, and because the web app kind of doesn't allow that, we're limited in what we can do there. But the native app does allow us to partition those cookies, and so we're able to uh, to record multiple profiles. And um, I can personally say that it's very satisfying to um, to have two different Gmail, uh, Gmail uh, cards that are each logged into the correct Gmail account. And I don't have to fiddle with it. So it's very satisfying, uh, something we're really interested in. Yeah, and we have about four minutes left. Um, so is there any other last minute questions we wanna talk about? Did I miss any? I definitely have some questions. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. After you. Well, go for I, it. It's not a four minute answer. I, I I feel like that maybe I should ask it on Discord. Um, I was just looking for things. I had questions for things that are more related to like first time you've seen this, first time you've used it. Um, you know, you get at least I get a little confused with like transclusion. Um but I do like blobbies. I, I, I think blobbies is, is pretty good. <laughs> um, but I, I'm going to ask my questions uh, in Discord and just continue showing up to office hours when you have them and learn the tool more. And definitely there's there's several different ways to talk about this. There's the highly conceptual way where we're talking about the fundamentals. And then there's the usability way. And both of these matter. Um, everybody's uh, going to be interested in in one aspect or another, and that's that's completely understandable. Um, so either way, you know we're super interested in engaging and having good conversations on this. I just want to point out, uh, just just for funsies, these colors are great. Uh, it's really really colorful today. <laughs> yeah, and Brad, definitely please as many questions as you have, throw them in the Discord. We're there. Um, these office hours, guys, for everybody, they're happening. As far as we know now, every uh, every Tuesday at this time, um, I will make sure that the little events tab in our Discord server is updated every single week so you can RSVP, but also the Luma link, um, it should allow you to subscribe to the entire series to make sure that this shows up on your calendar recurring every single week. If that's not happening, we'll figure it out for you. Um, but this time, every Tuesday, we're doing office hours. 
Obviously, please do not wait a week to ask your questions and get help. <laughs> we are here. So bother us, harass us. Like we are welcoming it because honestly, it is so fueling um, to have these conversations and to tinker and get your feedback and make this all better. Here, here. Mm -hmm.